with yet another DJ's Brewtube beer review. Well, you see, I'm extra animated today, guys. Why is that? Because I'm going to review a beer that I was fucking geeking out about last year. And what beer is that? It's one from Great Lakes Brewing Company out of Cleveland, Ohio, US of A. Yay, yay. It's their Chill Wave DIPA. Now, you're saying, DJ, you didn't review that beer before. Well, yes, I did. Because this beer used to be called Alchemy Hour DIPA. But they got sued, so they had to change the name. And as the name suggests, anyways, it's a DIPA. This is a spring serving, 9.4% ABV, and 80 IBUs. Now... I know this beer is exceedingly fresh. Why? Because my good buddy, the Johnny G, over at Crafty Beer Reviews, just picked this up and sent it down to me because he rocks. If you haven't watched his channel, you don't rock. You suck. Watch Johnny's channel. Sub up. He does awesome beer reviews and great, I mean great, music recommendations and accompaniments with said beer. So anyways, this beer is a beer that features Mosaic Hops. It also employs Nugget and Cascade, and they're using three malts in it. And one of those malts is honey malt. And I remember last year, man, I was geeking out on this bad boy. I gave it a straight up A. So, and a really high A at that. So, I'm going to get the top popped on this bottle, get it in my lovely Mad Elf Snifter, and tell you what's up this year with Chill Wave, a.k.a. formerly known as Alchemy Hour. Maybe it's the artist or the beer formerly known as Alchemy Hour. Obsessively collectible crown, of course. Let's get this bad boy in the glass. It's the perfect temperature. I got it at about like mm, 48, 49 degrees. That's where I like to drink DIPAs these days. Awesome. There is a Best Buy date on the bottle. Um, it could be, you know, better than that. It could be like uh, maybe um, bottling date, but they didn't do it. I can smell the hops wafting off the top of this bad boy from here, by the way. So, super clear orange color. I remember a slight bit of haze. Maybe if I got down the bottom of the bottle and poured it all out, I'd get a little haze, but that won't fit in the snifter. We got a solid one finger head of really tight packed bubbles. A little soap sudsy at the center, but look at that lovely, lovely orange amber color. Kind of mimics the orange that's on the labeling and on the carton here. And you can see we've even saved our old Alchemy Hour bottle. I like this beer that much last year. So, let's get a nose on this bad boy. Tell you what's up in the aroma department. Oh, damn. Big mango, pineapple, orange, mm, papaya. Man, this beer smells awesome. And there's that honey, honey sweetness in the background. This is making my mouth water, guys. Cheers. I'm diving in. Hell yes. Mm. Just as I remember last year, this is just the bomb diggity fruit juiciest taste in beer with no fruit juice or or orange peel adjunct or anything like that in it. Right up at the front, I'm getting mango. And then after that, some of the pineapple. After that, I'm getting like a grapefruit zest and a blood orange zest almost, that sort of bitterness. Um, not regular orange, but blood orange. It's got more of that little sort of grapefruit tang and zestiness to it and a bit of bitterness bite. There's a slight bit of dankness and pine to it, and it's got a nice dry, dry finish that invites you back like every DIPA should to drink more. You don't smell the alcohol. You don't taste it. The mouthfeel is full medium. And, man, it just goes down like freaking glass. For 9.4%, this is a really dangerous beer. It drinks super easy. And if you tackled a four-pack of this, you would no doubt be cronked. And, man, the final taste that I get on this, like the lingering taste, is a little bit of bitterness like citrus or grapefruit or blood orange zest bitterness, like I, I had mentioned, with some of that honey malt. Such a delicious, fruit juicy, mango delicious beer. The only beer that I've had more mango experience with this, maybe in this flavor, is is abrasive, which is a little bit bigger beer than this. But man, I think of Mosaic hops. I've had other beers that use Mosaic since then, some from Terrapin and other guys, and this is the best use of Mosaic hops that I've had so far. The pairing with the other couple hops they have in here, man, this is just a freaking bumping beer. So you see, I'm geeking out. What do the other guys say about this beer? Rape Beer gives it a straight up 99. A plus up in your grill. Beer Advocate gives it a 95. What do I give it? You know what? Last year I gave it a 97. And I'm going to knock it up one point to this. This beer is consistent. I still am really digging it after I've had other Mosaic Hop beers. And I'm going to bump it up to the A plus myself. I'm going to bump it up to the 98. Just in that A plus range. But man, if you guys can find this beer, buy it, trade for it. It's worth getting. I got two more to drink. I'm a happy freaking man. I even shared one with Johnny, my Johnny, the stunt drinker, because I'm a nice dude. So you'd be really nice to me if you would think globally and drink locally and support the craft beer movement to help guys like Great Lakes still keep making awesome creations like this, man, so we can just expand and expand and make people have their happy, hoppy face on like I got right now. 
Till the next time, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. I got a big-ass bunch of love for you, and now, damn, what? Shit. A big-ass peace out!